we've looked at the F and the A and the M of our family factors in terms of math education. Now it's on to our family I factor. Does a family fit the learning styles and abilities of our students? As you consider the individuals in your family, some of the factors we've been talking about may emerge as important for one child or another. For instance, pacing, how fast the instruction moves. Some children need a slower pace with more review and repetition, while others need the challenge of a fast pace. Use of manipulatives is another consideration. Many, if not most, math programs are either organized around the use of manipulatives or they strongly encourage their use, particularly in the early primary years. This is because manipulatives help the child to move from concrete thinking to abstract thinking. Students first touch and feel and manipulate concrete items, then are taught to recognize pictorial concrete or pictures of concrete items, then they're taught to understand that the abstract meaning of the math symbols is used to represent the concrete items. Even though most math programs will use manipulatives to some extent, there can be a lot of variation in terms of how much. Programs like Right Start and Schiller Math and Mequon Math are completely immersed in manipulatives. Others like Singapore or Horizons allow the teacher to pick and choose how often the manipulatives are used. Some, like Saxon, are fully integrated with manipulatives in the early years, but phase out completely in middle school. Saxon also uses manipulatives not only for concept presentation, but also for the development of thinking and reasoning skills. One thing to remember is that courses that use manipulatives tend to also require a large amount of teacher-student interaction, particularly at the early elementary grades. Students will vary in terms of the need for manipulatives-based instruction. Some might be bored or even uninterested, readily able to make the jump to pictorial concrete. Others will need the tactile, kinesthetic connection in order to learn. Other factors that might affect the individuals in your family include the amount of review, the amount of color, and whether or not there is a workbook available rather than the student needing to write all the problems out on a separate piece of paper. Any one of these factors might be a deal breaker in terms of a particular curriculum for a particular student. Our family L factor is life. Your family's situation is unique. Do you need a program where your child can work independently? How able are you to commit to the time necessary for a program that's designed to be totally teacher-student in interactive? It's important to consider these aspects. I think this might be a good time to warn you about the danger of constantly changing math programs. It's not unusual for me to talk to moms who have used several math programs, one after another, never really sticking to one for more than a year because they just don't seem to be working. Sometimes it is necessary to switch because a student is really floundering in a particular math program. However, if at all possible, especially in the early elementary years, it is best to find a program that works well for your family and then stick with it. Do not listen to what everybody is saying about the latest program. Do not switch because your friend is using something that sounds like more fun or that sounds like it might be easier to use. Math is sequential and different programs have different pacing. You can actually miss important chunks of instruction if you're not careful because of the differences in scopes and sequences of the various programs. This is particularly true if you are moving between sequential programs and spiral programs. Remember our Jenga game? It's different at the high school level. Courses are more complex and content is more stable. Public schools routinely switch between publishers for individual courses at that level. If you are starting a course of study with a new publisher, we always recommend that you have your student take a placement test. Most of our major math program publishers provide placement tests and we've added them to our website to make it more convenient for you. On our website, search for math placement tests and a list of all the tests we have available will, will come up. Just download, print, and have your student take the test. Our last family factor is the Y factor, you. This is probably the factor that is most often overlooked. How much teacher support do you need? How confident do you feel about teaching math? If I were to conduct a study, I suspect that I would discover that homeschool moms are more insecure about teaching math than any other subject. Perhaps this is because the math instruction they received as a child left them unprepared to master the high school math courses. Perhaps because the conflicts surrounding the various methods of teaching 
leaves an underlying fear that if, they're not, if they don't do it right, their children will have serious holes in their education. This insecurity is very understandable, but homeschool moms can relax a bit. Today's math curricula provides many helps and support. First of all, there are excellent, well-constructed courses, each with a comprehensive scope and sequence. A family can literally start in kindergarten with a particular publisher and then continue clear through high school. Some publishers provide scripted lessons, particularly at the early elementary levels. Scripting means that every word the teacher needs to say is right there in the teacher's manual. Right Start, Saxon's K-3, through and McRuffy are totally scripted. Even if not completely scripted, most math programs have a comprehensive and helpful teacher's guides or home instructor's guides. These provide lesson plans, lesson presentations, answers, solutions. Sometimes answers just aren't enough. Being able to view complete, step-by-step -step solutions can make all the difference. This seems to be something that publishers are recognizing more and more. Saxon was probably the first to offer a solution manual, but now you see them as options on many courses. Even if you love math and can easily complete high school math problems, the solutions manual will save you time and provide a good teaching tool for your student as they compare the correct solution with the incorrect one. Some publishers also provide a computer version like Saxon Teacher. When mom is busy with other children or home business or insecure about teaching math, courses that are designed for independent learning are a blessing. All instruction is written to the student and when you couple those with solutions manuals, a student can work somewhat independently. Alpha, Mega, both the Life Packs and Switched on Schoolhouse Saxon's Middle School and Secondary Courses, Developmental Math, Math Mammoth, and The Life of Fred are all written directly to the student. One word of caution. While I wouldn't want to assume it's inevitable, I think we do need to be careful to not provide an opportunity for our children to be tempted beyond their ability to withstand. I've talked to enough moms to know that cheating does crop up in homeschooling. Never let your child continue day after day with only self-checking of their math. Keep them honest. You can do that with random spot checks. Another advantage of the random spot checks, by the way, is that you will know if they're consistently missing certain types of problems. Technology can provide another support if you do not want to teach upper-level math yourself. There are video instruction courses like Video Text or A Plus Tutor Soft, or supplements like Dives, Ask Dr. Callahan, and Mastering Algebra. These options provide complete instruction, usually in the form of DVDs, or PowerPoint presentations coupled with workbook practice. Typically, there are also complete solutions for every problem. One of the nicest features of some courses is the fact that there are real people at the end of a phone line or email that are willing to answer questions and help students figure out how to work particular problems. Both Saxon and Ask Dr. Callahan have this feature. Our Rainbow Consultant team has put together several math program comparison charts that are available on our website. These are designed to show how the various math programs provide for the needs of your family along the lines of the family factors. There's a chart for math programs for all grades, one for elementary grades, and one for secondary grades. We've talked about some of the foundational aspects of math, what should be included in the early and the middle years, but we get lots of questions about high school math and math credits. High school math courses have traditionally been algebra, geometry, advanced algebra, and advanced math, which usually includes trigonometry and pre-calculus. Now, though, college prep students will often be on track to take algebra in seventh or eighth grade so that they can take calculus and or college algebra in high school. Some high schools offer dual credit courses in college algebra and or calculus. Homeschoolers can also get dual credits by taking courses at a local community college or by taking AP and CLEP tests. If a student is heading towards the math or science career path, there are distinct advantages to having AP courses like Saxon Calculus on his transcript. Some upper tier universities will only consider students who have taken AP courses, and at the same time, they don't accept any AP credit. On the other end of the spectrum, it's possible to receive high school credit for pre-algebra, as well as consumer math courses. Be sure to check the requirements specified by your state's homeschooling laws. Sometimes we're tempted to let our children slide by in terms of higher level math. We're like my son, and we think our children will not need it. Or other times it just happens that we're busy 
and it's difficult, and maybe our friends are letting it slide too. If you're tempted to do that, please consider these things. First of all, algebra and geometry build thinking and reasoning skills. How often have we run into people that can't think in a straight line? This is often the direct result of a limited math education. Secondly, taking strong college prep, high school math courses keeps the doors open for our children. It gives our students more options. It allows them more choices should they decide later that they want to go into a math or science career. Do we really want our children's options limited because we fail to challenge them with classes of appropriate difficulty? Thirdly, if we allow our children to slide by with math classes that are barely more than arithmetic, then we are in effect handicapping them for teaching our grandchildren. They will be less prepared and they'll sense that they're unable to teach or even supervise higher level courses. I tend to think that it will even impact a mom's ability to teach basic arithmetic. Fourthly, if we let our children slide by in math, we contribute to the general perception many have that homeschooling provides an inferior education. Fifthly, conquering higher level math at the high school level is empowering. It causes a student to realize that he can work hard and do something that requires discipline and determination that he doesn't need to be afraid of a whole discipline. Letting our children slide by with math cripples them. Lastly, there's a beauty and an orderliness to math, one might even call it a godlikeness, that we only catch a glimpse of in the lower levels. As we conquer those levels and start to explore at higher levels, we can begin to understand, or at least be fascinated with, math phenomena such as fractals and Fibonacci sequences. Remember my son who asked me almost daily why he had to take math since he didn't think he would ever use it? Well, guess what? He isn't using it, not in an everyday in his job sort of way. But I had the pleasure of overhearing him tell another young man that he should be sure to take more math than he ever thought he would use. Afterwards, I asked him about that and he said somewhere along the line he had just realized that it was good to keep his options open for a while. We've covered a lot of territory here, but it's time to summarize and pull things together. Repeatedly, moms ask us, what is the best program? What is the best math curriculum? There are even some math programs that have labeled themselves as the best. This is essentially foolishness. There is no one-size-fits-all math program. There is no program that is so superior to all the other excellent programs that can call itself the best. What you want is the best curriculum choice for you and for your students. Every program has its strengths and its weaknesses. Every program has the things that it does very well. What's going to make the happiest match is when the things that a program does very well are exactly the things that you've determined are the most important. Find the program that fits your family. We can help. At Rainbow, we have hundreds probably thousands of math curriculum products. I'm here and the other consultants are here to help you sort through those and make wise choices. It's our goal that no rainbow homeschooling home should ever serve as a battleground for the math wars.